Hey guys, Bob from Retro RGB here. I have kind of a cool device that my friend found at a Goodwill, just kind of laying around. Uh, but unfortunately, when I went to do the review, it was right before I moved. I think it was actually the day before or two days before. Um, and I hadn't slept in like a week. I mean, I was a mess. I looked drunk in the video. I wasn't, shockingly. Uh, so I figured I would just give a quick intro here. Um, and then interrupt myself twice inside of this video, um, and that way uh, I could kind of explain what's going on a little bit better than I did when I originally found it. But let's start off from the top, and then I'll kind of jump in and interrupt myself when necessary. I have something kind of neat and different and a little bit interesting, at least in my opinion. It's a Sega VCD player manufactured by Tian Li. So kind of a, an interesting thing. In China, up until quite recently, video game players were actually illegal. So in order for them, for any company to get their game console into China, they had to disguise it as something else. So Nintendo did it, uh, I believe with a DVD player, I think it was the GameCube, um, and Sega found tons of creative ways to get it in. Um, and they partnered with a company called Tianli, which I'm really sorry if I'm mispronouncing that to any of my Mandarin speaking friends. I'm trying, man. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Tian Li. But anyway, they combined a video CD player. So for anybody that's under 30, probably has no idea what that is. But basically, it's a DVD compressed onto a CD. So it looks really terrible. But video CD, uh, it's got two microphone outputs. I don't know. This thing's kind of crazy. But it was the way they were able to get it into China in order to get their games sold. So I figured I would give a quick... Um, overview of the console itself, uh, what it could do, what features it has, and then kind of see if can it be RGB modded, what chips is it made uh, made with, and kind of just a basic overview. So hopefully you guys will be interested and uh, let me you do the overview of the console. So I figured I would start just by kind of showing around the console. And uh, first, I have to say that it's kind of neat. Uh, my buddy Justin, aka the Goodwill Hunter, got this for $7 at a Goodwill. So, kind of neat just to see a weird piece of technological video game history go across the ocean into Georgia, into my friend's hands, into mine. So, I kind of, I love how stuff like that works. But anyway, so you'll see in front, it's Tian Li model number TL2000. It has two microphone inputs with uh, discrete volume controls, and I'm going to assume that's for karaoke because the karaoke CDs were actually kind of a big deal in the 90s. Um, I guess they have reverb built in because there's echo. I'm assuming this is just like any other CD track skip buttons. And then just the very basic open close. Uh, I forgot what PVC meant. <clears throat> uh, play, pause, return, stop, LR. And then, you know, the fast forward buttons. Basically, they make it look, they disguise it very well as just a piece of audio equipment that would go into you know, anybody's basic stereo setup, except for a couple of very important things. The first, of course, is the Genesis controller inputs in the back. So that's the standard inputs for any Genesis, you know, Sega Master System 32X. But also, the other things are an S-Video output, which was funny because although all of the Genesis consoles used the Sony chips that actually had S-Video capabilities, none of them had the port. Uh, and the other interesting thing is there's dual audio outputs for VCD and then separate audio output for VCD game and two video. So I really don't know, is there actually three audio outputs and two video inputs? Or outputs, sorry. Um, or does it, is it really like the uh, DVD VHS combos where they each have their own discrete? So I, I'll definitely want to try that out. And also, very interesting to me, is that a full Genesis 2 multi out including RGB support? Or is it just a multi out for composite purposes? Uh, the only other things in the back, just confirming the uh, model number and that it's 220 volts. And uh, same thing over here. Now, luckily, Justin also sent me a step-up converter so that I'm actually able to use this on standard US plugs. So I just have to plug it into this, plug this thing into my wall, and we'll go. So let me try to turn it on now, and hopefully I'll use the step-up converter correctly and won't let myself on fire. 
So I have just the basics plugged in. I have a composite video and one Genesis controller port. And then I have it hooked up to my little 8 inch PVM monitor via composite. So I'm going to turn the thing on and see what happens. Alright, so we immediately get Tian Lee on the screen. I can't read Mandarin at all, so I really don't understand what the video overlay means, but um, I'm assuming it means loading. Okay. So, nothing happening with the Genesis controller. So what I'd like to see, right off the bat, is it compatible with RGB. So I have just a, a standard Genesis con uh, RGB cable. Plug it right into the port. Nothing. We get nothing at all. All right, so let's uh, let's load a game. Now, normally with um, with stuff like this, I would probably try to edit the video so that it's shorter and you guys don't have to deal with all of it. But because I've literally never even seen one of these before, I figured I would just let it play in real time so that we could all kind of experience it together and maybe see how long or short or whatever the loading time is. But let me uh, you know just one. And uh, when, when Justin got the discs, they're actually all just CDRs. There's, there's nothing really on this. Okay, so something's loading. Mm, I can't really select anything. You might not be able to see the screen, but nothing's selecting with the controller. Oh, but I hit the one button, so I'm assuming number one is what's loading right now. So I'm actually going to skip this part real quick, because what happened was I'd hit the one button to launch game number one, and then when it took forever and it wasn't responding, I hit the one button again, and then I hit the two button. And I didn't realize that with each button press, the system registered the button press, but would wait till the loading was done until it was actually, until it would go back and go through the second. So if it takes a minute to load, you press button one, and 30 seconds through, you hit button one again. At the end of that first minute, it resets and reloads again. So it's, um, it's kind of a pain in the ass for that, but let me show you what it, the loading time is actually like and what the games look like. Over one minute loading time. Alright, this actually plays exactly like a Genesis, so it's definitely using the Genesis chip. Ok, 
right, well, let's see what happens if we plug different video cables in. So down here, I'll go from the two video inputs that we saw before, I'll take it out of one and put it into the other. All right, so that's interesting. The one that's in the video game part is shows the game, but if you remove that and place that into the other one, it still is showing the menu of the video CD. That's a little nuts. Okay, um, let me switch it to RGB mode and see if we get anything at all on the RGB port. Not a thing. Okay. So, uh, not much more to show here, so let me just pull this thing apart and see what we have inside. So now that the top is off, there's a few things that are expected and a couple unexpected things. So obviously CD-ROM drive, we have the power supply, uh, and even the board that has the uh, microphone inputs with the different volume and echo knob, echo? Yeah, echo knob, which is, I guess, just reverb. That all just goes through that board, and that's all pretty expected. Um, I'm not really sure what this is. I think this is mostly just control. Um, don't really know what that chip does. But this board is the one that's kind of a mystery to me, because I don't see uh, any of the Sony CXA encoders that I would expect, just like on the other Sega boards. And here's all the separate audio video outputs, and of course that Sega Multi out. But I don't really see anything connected to it. I mean, there's something up there that kind of looks reminiscent, but it's not a CXA uh, 1645. So, yeah, I'm not really sure what to look at next. So I'm going to pull some of these boards out and see what else I find, and I'll get video of that as well. Okay, now that we've taken this main board on top out with all the actual outputs, Things are starting to make sense. So they're connected with these cables, and you'll immediately notice the Sega chip, which is uh, one of the brains behind the Genesis. And that looks suspiciously like a Sony CXA encoder right there. Uh, I'm not really sure what the other stuff on this board is, but probably related to the controller output. And it might just be the Chinese clones of the actual Sony chips that were on the Sega boards. So, pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to probe this and see if I can find uh, anything going to the multi-out and maybe possibly even add RGB out to the bottom here because that's the chips for the, or that's the pins for the actual multi-out. Yeah, I have no idea what I was just talking about there. Um, that's just sleep deprivation or something. I mean, it's been months since I actually uh, filmed that video. I just kind of found it. So I think what I meant to say was I couldn't really identify every chip on there because it's not the same as a normal Genesis. And if I had just poked around a little bit longer, I could have found the video encoder. Um, but it just, at that point, the conclusion that I came to was just simply that, you know, it, it, it uses the original Sega... CPU and GPU. So if you wanted, you could just do a bypass and add RGB if it doesn't have it already. Maybe it just needs some connectors uh, or some connections added. But overall, I wouldn't really bother because while it's a very cool piece of history and it's something that I, I'm just very lucky that I got to play with, it's not something anybody would game with. Um, I just wouldn't ever waste my time. And on top of that, uh, at least in America, I'm sure those are a dime a dozen in China, but that's really rare to find in America, and that's something that I'd want to leave completely stock, just to kind of show off, um, you know, for what it is as a unique product. So I didn't really go any farther with it, and I don't want to. Um, it's back with Justin now. He could obviously do whatever he pleases with it, but I still think it was just kind of a cool thing overall to go and see a piece of technology that uh, us in the U.S. would have never normally seen and to see the creative ways that manufacturers kind of got around that no um, no video games rule. Because, so, you know, on the one hand, while, you know, while waiting a minute for each game to load and then, you know, it, having to deal with burning CDRs back in, you know, in the 90s, while that would have been a pain, at the same time, it's better than no games at all, and I certainly would have waited a minute a game to play Genesis and Super Nintendo when I was a kid. So definitely a cool piece of history, at least to, to look at. 
Um, and I hope the video was at least good enough for you guys. But uh, yeah, I'll, I think that was the last video in the queue from when I lived in the other apartment. So don't worry, that's the last one that'll be all weird like that. I'll try to make them at least a little bit better from now on. So as usual, thanks for all your comments and criticism down below. I look forward to hear what everybody has to say about it. And I'll see you guys next time.